Okay, this video is all about what now for Israel Falau. And all jokes aside, what options are left open to him? Well, we, we've got to look at Rugby Union in Australia. They've already come out, Rugby Australia have come out and said they're standing by their decision. They're not going to be moved on the fact that they have terminated his contract with immediate effect. They are not budging on this. There obviously is an appeals process that Israel Falau will go under. The Players Union have come out and said that he has a right to appeal. Um, and Israel Palau has stated through the union that he wants to honour his playing contract and play through to 2022. He said that, um, which means he'll be 33 by the time this contract would have expired. He wants to play at the World Cup and he wants to, to continue playing rugby to honour his contract. However, Rugby Australia's stance is, well, you breached the code of conduct and you were warned about your social media conduct last year after the last incident before you, he got his uh, contract extension. He was warned about this. This created a lot of problems last year. He's done it again in the build-up to Easter this year. Um, and they are standing very firmly behind the decision to terminate his contract. So Rugby Union in Australia, at least, looks close to him. The NRL have come out um, in the early hours uh, this morning, our time, Australian time, first thing in the morning. And they have also said that the Australian Rugby League Commission, which is the governing body of rugby league in Australia and New Zealand, uh, and governing body of the NRL, has come out and said that they would block any attempt by Israel Falau or any of his representatives to get him registered as an NRL player with any of the 16 clubs. So the NRL... Uh, have have said we are not having him play for us. He doesn't meet um, our code of conduct of inclusiveness, uh, and and the NRL are also bearing in mind coming off the back of a very scandalous off season with seventeen separate incidents involving players of a legal nature that have harmed the image of rugby league, and. The NRL is in damage limitation mode. They've entered this new era, as they call it. They've rebranded themselves, and the off-season has been highly damaging for the NRL. And they don't want any more controversy surrounding the league. They want to have a more let the players on the field do the talking, let the sport do the talking, because the off-field stuff has been highly damaging for the NRL in recent recent months. Uh, there are some pl players facing criminal charges, going to trial. Other players have been done for drink driving, and various other other scandals that have beset the NRL, and I'm not sure how many NRL players would be happy to play with Israel Falau. You know, the NRL does have its own image problem, and it's in, you know, rebuilding its trust with its fan base and its sponsors after all the scandal. Because the NRL has taken the decision not to allow Israel Falau to register as a rugby league player, the Super League will follow suit because it follows a parallel disciplinary process. Uh, so when Ben Barber was stripped banned for life for domestic violence allegations, the Super League followed suit straight away. So that's already closing down an avenue unless there's exceptional circumstances for the Super League. Now, the Super League is further into the season than the NRL. It's on, I think, week nine. The NRL was on week five. So there's already less time left in the Super League season. And the salary cap in, in both leagues is, is very strictly enforced. Is there room in the salary caps for any club? Probably not on the wages that Israel Falau would command as a dual code player. So Super League is already shut as well to Israel Falau. Rugby Union in the Northern Hemisphere, the Pro Pro 14, the Top 14, and the Gallagher Premiership, all those uh, top-level professional leagues are near the end of their season. Uh, you know, they're winding down. They're, they're winding down the end of their season. They've had their squads registered for European Cup games uh, and league games and domestic cup competitions. They, he wouldn't even be able to play this season. Uh, it would be pointless. Uh, and and again, if, if, if Rugby Australia has come out and said, we're not allowing him to play under contract in Australia. What club in the Northern Hemisphere would want to risk signing him, considering that a, may, a governing body has terminated his contract? What club, which is governed by a governing body, would want to, to sign him? That would be of an interesting note as well. Um, you know, that would create a lot of media frenzy. Uh, and and a lot of controversy and, and rugby unions had a fair bit of controversy as well. Not just rugby league. It's 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 both kinds of rugby have had fair fair bits of controversy over over the years. Uh, and I don't think they would want any further controversy considering that rugby union itself has got enough issues to deal with. Um, and it would create unnecessary negative media attention on the sport at a time when you've got the World Cup coming and you want to have all that positive build up for all the national sides going into that World Cup in Japan in September. That leads to Major League Rugby, but Major League Rugby doesn't have the finances to, to, to finance his wages. 
Uh, there's a salary cap, and all Major League Rugby sides are limited to 10 overseas players in a squad. Uh, most, I think all the squads now have their overseas allocations um, for non-Canadian and US-based players. They're not going to want to sign him. Uh, although there are ex-internationals of, of, of a decent quality uh, playing in the ML, MLR, Israel Falau is a world-class player, but at the same time, they will also be fully aware of the of the the media frenzy in other parts of the world. A lot of players have come out and said they don't want to play on the same field as Israel Falau, which is is telling. Um, and there's a lot of Australians playing in the Major League Rugby of you know who may may not feel happy with him as a teammate or as an opposition player. Uh, whether the fans are happy to accept or, or US rugby is happy to accept him is another thing. But if if Rugby Australia have come out and said this guy is not welcome to play our sport, uh, that would send a strong message to other professional leagues around the world. And Major League Rugby, I don't think, has the money. Um, he would definitely set the league alight, but it doesn't have the money to to fund his what would he expect as his wages, which would be really a lot of money. And then we have to look back in Australia. This is the league that has said nothing. Okay, The AFL. The AFL has not said a word about Israel Falau. They have not come out and said he's not welcome. But at the same time, they haven't said, well, we'll give him a chance. They've said they've given no statements. When the NRL and, and, and the Super, and Super Rugby are coming out and saying he's not welcome to play for us, he's not welcome to be registered as a player, the AFL, where he has played before, admittedly not very successfully, but he has played before, have stayed remarkably silent on the entire thing. They were silent last year when he was disciplined for his social media posts and his anti-LGBT comments, they've stayed silent again. I cannot find a news article with the AFL have said we condemn Israel Falau for these comments. But will he want to go to the AFL considering that he didn't have the most successful spell the first time around and his age? Would any AFL team go, yeah, we want to sign a 30-year-old uh, controversial player who's got a lot of controversy around him? Do we want that for our brand? Because the AFL is the biggest sport in Australia. It is the most supported sport in Australia. It has the highest viewership figures in Australia, the highest crowds. Would they want to have that much controversy associated with their sport? Um, and that's something. I think Israel Falau is... is fast running out of options he may actually his career could be over as we speak uh it'll be interesting to see what what rugby union and rugby league in the northern hemisphere say but as as i'm uh, as i as i see it the super league follows the same disciplinary rulings as the nrl in parallel they communicate on a lot of op- on a lot of things including as i said the ben barber uh, uh ban they were both in agreement he's banned for life he will not be registered as a super league player even though he's played there before so israel Falau's options are fast running out now until uh, the RFL uh, and the various um, the various uh, professional rugby union leagues in the Northern Hemisphere actually come out and say he is not welcome to play, his options are still open, but they are closing rapidly. Now, he does have, as I say, a process of appeal. He will appeal, but I highly doubt that his appeal will be upheld considering he was warned about his social media con- content and his conduct online after last year's incident. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. So now, thank you very much for watching. I'll have some more videos for you soon. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe in the uh, bar below, and I'll see you soon.